Welcome back to the shop. I'm Dave, and this week I'm going to be rebuilding and re gearing this Dana 70 axle. This axle is one of the last remaining rusty pieces to take care of on the frame, and this week I'm hoping to take care of that. This axle is going to get the full treatment. It's going to get new bearings, seals, pinion, crown, and of course a new brake job. So my first step is to pull this out from underneath the frame. What I've been able to find out online is this axle weighs about 480 pounds dressed up, including the drum brakes. So that being said, I hope I didn't buy my tickets to ride on the struggle bus here. I'm hoping that it comes out easily. I'm going to start out here by lifting the frame up a bit more, and then I'll support it back here with some jack stands, and then I'll cut these U-bolts on each side, and then lower it down onto probably some furniture moving dollies, which are good for about a thousand pounds each, and then I'll get it to the front of the shop where I'll take it from there. So with that being said, let's get after it. Okay, got her on the bench. I'm going to take this diff cover off and change the fluids and see what's inside. Hopefully it's not bananas. Ooh, she stank. If you know, you know. That gear oil. Sheesh. All right, so we don't have a gasket on there. It's uh, probably it's probably Permatex. That's uh, not surprising. It wasn't leaking, so. <laughs> well, it wasn't leaking. Coming to look at the back of the pan. Uh, a little fuzzy on the magnet, but no matter, because it's gonna go through a full rebuild. So yeah, I guess next I'm gonna look at taking the carrier out. Uh, Probably gotta pull the drums off and the axles. These are floating axles. And uh, I'll tackle that. Okay, got both axles pulled out. Just chilling over here. And then I'm pulling, I was pulling the carrier out. I noticed that uh, it came out pretty easy. There is shims in there, but uh, I was kind of expecting more of a fight, to be honest. Uh, usually you gotta wrestle with them a little bit. Although it's pretty heavy, don't get me wrong. It's, in my opinion, it probably shouldn't have just walked right out of there. I don't see any irregular wear with it on both edges of the teeth here. Um, with it being a rear axle, it's doing all the work all the time, so I'm not too concerned about it. Or I don't have any reason to be concerned about it. Back of the case here, I'll turn some light on. I uh, hit it with a little bit of brake clean, but I'm just going to let her uh, drain out here, probably overnight. And uh, finish cleaning it back up and tackle it again tomorrow. Although I should mention this is not a tutorial video on how to rebuild a Dana 70. It's my first time at uh, rebuilding one of these. I rebuilt the Dana 60 a couple weeks ago and uh, learned definitely a lot about it. 
but uh, make sure you mark your carrier caps when you pull them out. That way you can put them back in the same spot and uh, yeah, you don't get, them, don't get them mixed up. Loosen the pinion nut off. I don't think I've ever seen a pinion nut look that bad. So quick update here, I got the pinion dropped out, um, I got the bearings, the bearing races, they're pressed out here too. Uh, I was able to use a large large socket for the smaller one which was a little tricky to come out and then I used a brass drift and I got that larger one out from inside here. I also pulled the bearings off the carrier here and took the then I took the crown off here as well. So this axle has a limited slip in it, really what that means is when you pull this off Hopefully I won't let all the clutches go everywhere. Inside here is uh, three clutch packs and they're all dome shaped clutches here. And they, uh, they're in between these two mating surfaces here. And then that provides a little bit of pressure onto, this was the uh, spider gears inside. Now this is a good example of scope creep. I didn't initially intend to change these clutches out on limited slip, but since you're in here and you're looking at it, you might as well uh, get after it. The unfortunate part is I didn't order these uh, parts several weeks ago like with the other parts that I had procured. So I'm guessing it's going to delay this getting put back together. But since I'm in here, I'm kind of glad I'm taking care of it. The the wear material is missing right here that should be uniform and uh, yeah like this top one here is probably what I would expect a new clutch to look like that's the clutch material wearing off of it so I'm just going to get them all done wait for the parts to come up we'll put them together so this is kind of neat come apart like that grab them as one get them out of the way Got your other boy in here. Oh, there's some more clutches. Yeah, they do. It looks like the friction material is all, all together missing from this one.
Okay, fast forward a little bit. Got the carrier here. I got the crown on here and I've triple checked the torques on each of them. Got them uh, thread locked in. What I'm going to do next here is I'm going to put on my uh, I'm going to put on my setup bearings, which are just essentially bearings that have uh, been hollowed out on the inside here. And what they'll do is they'll just easily go on here. Uh, I use them for setting up shims and stuff like that, so I don't have to get the press out to like, or the puller out to pull them off. Anyways, I'm gonna put those on each side, and then I'm gonna drop them in here, and I'm gonna see the backlash from side to side, just to get a just to get a number. What I've also done down here is these are the old shims here. On each side, we got our drive side, non-drive side, and I measured them out, wrote them down here. Get out of here. And then I replicate them here. So I should be pretty close, but just gonna do some measuring. So if I get lost in the sauce, then uh, at least I have a save point. So next up, I'm gonna change the clutches in the limited slip here. I got them soaking in the friction modifier here. They're supposed to sit for about 20 minutes in that. And then uh, I'll put them back together. Okay, now they've been soaking for over 20 minutes and I'm gonna get ready to install it. So according to this, it says uh, to put the clutch ring in and then do a thick plate, a dish disc, and then a thin, two thin plates. And when you get down here, it says the thin plate assembly is noted on one of the tabs. Uh, spoiler, it's not. Um, when you buy a new set of these, the tab I would expect would be here. But if you look closely at th the friction material, uh, it'll say there, thin. I assume that wears off, but I got four thins and two thicks, so and the thick don't say anything. It just says, uh, like the part number or wherever it's from. Okay, let's get her installed. Okay, got the limited slip uh, assembled here. And then uh, I torqued these down to 80 foot-pounds. Uh, they had the 180 bolts on them, so they require a higher torque value. And because I need 80 foot-pounds, holding on to that's a bit of a trick. So I took a block of wood and put it in between the vise and then uh, used, uh, used some straps to hold her still and uh, got her tightened up. All right, here's the old pinion and the new pinion. The old pinion is... Uh, set for minus one and the new pinion is a zero so I took this uh, took this bearing off so because there's a shim underneath these don't come with the master rebuild kit so we throw that on top there and then I'll press new bearing on there and then we'll be pretty close and while I'm pressing that bearing on this bearing goes in the front here and sits on this one 
but I'm gonna put this uh, I'm gonna put this race in there. So I'm gonna pop this in the freezer so it cools down. This will be the next step after I put this bearing on. So the big idea here is I'm gonna heat this up in here to make it a little bit larger. And then when I pull the bearing out of the freezer, it should give me less trouble and hopefully just slide straight in. So I'll do this a couple of times. Well, I'll do this for a little bit and I'll show you how I made out. There, straight in. So I got the carrier in here and I'm just trying to take the back spacing out of this and trying to get a little bit of preload in there. So what I found out is when I shove it this way, zero, shove it all the way that way, I got about six thou play. I'm um, gonna mean shove it, I mean like pick up, these are just like loosely installed. I'll pick up the edge of the bearing here and I'll shove it all that way and then I'll zero it and then I'll pick up the bearing here and shove it this way. And then I'll see about putting three thou on each side, maybe four on each side, just so it shouldn't just drop right in. I should have to beat it a couple of times and that'll be a proper uh, carrier preload. So here I got painting preload here. Uh, I got some old bearings in and I'm just trying to figure out how many shims to put in. Uh, the original was about 74 thousandths of an inch and I settled on about 71 thousandths of an inch. And what happens is you want to make sure when it's swinging and continuously moving, you can see that I'm probably about like 18, 17, 18 inch pounds. So that's a good start for, uh, that's on the lower end. The spec is, the spec looks like 17 to 30, but since they're used bearings and there's no seal in there, um, that'll be good enough. That's, that's just enough pinion preload to get me into the next step. So I spin her around and I put this, uh, put the carrier in here and now I'm just checking backlash and I'm looking for between six and 10, uh, six and ten thou here and it looks like I got three so I'm gonna have to increase the backlash just a bit so with three thou backlash I gotta take that uh, three thou on this side and I'm gonna put it over here the small shim that I uh, did to increase the carrier preload so I'm gonna move it over here that'll move this carrier gear away from the pinion and I'll have a little bit more let's try that so I installed the bearing caps and torqued them down and just double checking the backlash here and it looks like I got about seven, seven and a quarter. So that's definitely fine. Next up here, I'm gonna check my pattern. So what I'm doing here is just marking, uh, just painting some of the gears, uh, some of the drive and the coast here with some gear marking paint. Uh, what I like to do is sometimes it's a little thick when it comes out of the pouch, is mixed up a little bit of gear oil that thins it out and goes a little further. So now that I've got it on here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a, I'm going to turn the pinion while holding the, the, the crown about, a, about as hard as I can to try to force a load on it and then see where this ends up. Alright, I think I like this pattern and uh, it's pretty close, it's in the middle between uh, the top and the bottom of this tooth and uh, change the setup bearings and uh, put the real bearings in and see, see how it looks uh, once again. All right, so I got the uh, I got the good bearings in, the new bearings in, and I had to move the shims over a little bit to get a little bit more backlash. I when I put together, I had about three thou, and now I have eight thou uh, just by moving over. I did the the pattern here, and uh, it looks pretty good. So from here, I'll put the front pinion seal on and put the new nut in, and button her up. And there we go. Got the pinion seal on, new nut, I got the back on too. And then next I'm going to get this thing painted up and cleaned up, painted up. Then uh, get the axles in, get new brakes on it. But that's going to be for next week. Uh, this week I've been busier than a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. So I'm going to leave her for there.